Jason Witherell, and I'm a teacher at Shawnee State University's Digital Gaming and Simulation Program. I actually started as an architect and a fine artist and then made the transition to computers and that was where everything kind of came together for me. I did a couple high school science fairs that did some computer programming and I liked it then. Really didn't decide to do it till probably in college. You get people that are all artists or all programmers or engineers, uh, but the people that can do both are really the, the key players, I think. My background was a little unusual for most people. I did have the dual computer science and the, the fine arts, so I took a lot of painting, a lot of drawing classes, um, and that kind of prepared me for the, the visual part of the job. I was just taking a traditional computer science class and Back in my day, it was mostly you have a DOS window and there's just a bunch of text. It was a little bit like a puzzle. You had to kind of think out of, outside of the box and it wasn't just memorizing a bunch of facts and then repeating them to a teacher. It was learning principles and then you could apply those to, to make something really cool. Then on my own, I did some graphics programming that brought in my artistic side and I could see both of those on screen at one time and it was really just like magic. You could imagine something in your head and there it is on the screen. It was more just teaching me how to think than memorizing a bunch of facts. Getting in that mindset and being able to tackle problems and if you come to a problem that you haven't seen before just know where to look. That you are able to think outside of the box that you can come to a new problem and think back to the things that were similar to that or thought processes that you used in the past and then go back to those. People think of a programmer and a computer scientist as somebody just sitting at a keyboard all day but it really is a lot of creativity being able to take an idea that you or that somebody else has and bring it to life and, and show them that that's a possibility. But you can have people working in simulations. So if you have a biomedical company that wants to do protein modeling, that would be something that we could do. Um, if you have a IT type job where you're uh, running a database for a large web-based company, we can do that. Research and development, IT, uh, business, the, those are the main fields that our students go into. Computer science is very linear, so if you learn the fundamentals, then the next class that you take is going to build on that. In the beginning, I didn't see how that all fit together, but when I got into this field, it was like, oh yeah, Dr. Hancock talked about that in his physics class, so I was able to bring that in. Um, then I think of an art class and just say, okay, I remember the color schemes, so I'm going to make this red and green as opposed to red and purple. There really isn't any field that you can't learn something from. Be as well-rounded as you can. Definitely all of the science that you can learn, as much math as you can take. We use trigonometry, we use physics, we use calculus, a uh, little bit of differential equations, so the more of that that you can get, the better. English, writing, history, psychology, there really isn't a bad class to take if you're interested in game development. Just be as varied as you can. I wouldn't pigeonhole yourself to, to one avenue. And I see a lot of students that they're so sure that they're gonna be a physics programmer. And then they get four or five years into it and they say, ah, uh, I don't really like physics as much as I thought I did. So they end up going to another avenue. But if they'd had that well-rounded experience when they were younger, I think it would be a little easier to make that transition. Don't get discouraged. I mean, it's very easy to get discouraged, especially when you come across something that just seems totally overwhelming, and it will seem overwhelming, but if you can just stick with it, start with the fundamentals. Don't try to make the next Halo 5 or Halo 6. Try to start simple, work your way up to the more complicated things. That's the way to, to really get into this and succeed.